Can you explain to people what happened in Roswell who don't know? Because this is yes. like the most, in my opinion, at least from what I've looked at, I don't know if you agree, but it's probably like the most important UFO event in the history of at least the United States. Certainly, yeah. So in nineteen in July of 1947, the uh, military, the United States military, it was the 509th Bomb Squadron based in Roswell, New Mexico. It was the only bomb squadron at the time exclusively responsible for the deployment of atomic weapons. The Enola Gay was there. Mm-hmm. It was a hand select elite unit. And they announced to the world this is a fact that we recovered a flying saucer, a crashed vehicle from somewhere else. They announced it to the world. Probably less than 12 hours later, they, um, I can go into the specifics if Please. you want. Yeah. So, what happened was this guy, Jesse Marcel, intelligence officer at the 509th went out with a guy named Mac Brazel. So Mac Brazel was a rancher and he had heard about these flying saucers. He'd heard about this reward for anything recovered or information. He had a huge ranch in the middle of nowhere, super remote spot. And he comes in the local base and he says, and he has some debris with him. And he says, um, you guys talk about these flying saucers. I think one of them crashed on my ranch. So they, of course, the 509th people, it was uh, Je- Major Jesse Marcel, and I don't remember the other name of the gentleman, that the military guy. They went out with this guy on the ranch. They go in. They spend the night. They come back the next day. They got this debris. They make the determination, all right, we've got, an, we've got a cr- crash of an unknown vehicle from another. Un-, and they make the announcement, and they tell the world. The higher-ups get involved. They get a B-29, they put the debris on a B-29, they're going to take it to Wright-Patterson Air Force Base. Jesse Marcel's on the airplane, they fly with a, with a pit stop at Fort Worth in Texas. They get off the plane, and there's a media frenzy everywhere. This, world, this story is making headline news all across the world immediately. Oh, right, yeah. And there's a guy named General Roger Ramey, he's standing at the base of the airplane, he's at the base at Fort Worth. And he looks at Jesse Marcel, who just came off the airplane, and said, you keep your mouth shut, let me handle this. And so they go in to a room. There's a conventional weather balloon on the ground, just like balsa wood and tin foil paper. And he says, and it was uh, General Ramey, General Roger Ramey, it was uh, Jesse Marcel and Colonel DuBose. And uh, they throw this debris out there. He said, you just stand there. And uh, this is what we found. Smile for the cameras. And the smile for the cameras. Yeah. And so they kill the story right there on the spot. Terribly sorry. What we once thought was a flying saucer turns out it's just a common everyday weather balloon. So this is actually. And Jesse and the and the debris is on the B two nine B twenty nine sitting on the tarmac right there. And I'll put it. I'll put this in the corner of the screen so people can see this. But if yeah. if you turn to the Je- TV behind you right now, <clears throat> yep. I just want to make sure so that we can give people yep. also like yep. the stuff you put together yeah. so they can see this. I got those. As, I got as, those original photographs from uh, from Roswell, the, the the local paper in Roswell. The Wrigler prints. Those are really high resolution photographs in the phenomenon. Who was this guy, by the way, walking to his view? Jesse Marcel. That's who you're talking about. Yes. Okay, so this is this is him reliving Coming, it. Yes. And this was this. I forget. Was this your footage? Uh, no, this was shot this in was the older. '80s, and yeah. I, I'm it, it, the most rare footage in the history of this case. We did a laser-like focus on Roswell. I got the number one researchers: Stanton Friedman, Kevin Randall. I got um, Don Schmidt. All the people that wrote the book on Roswell, and they said. This is an aspect that everyone has missed. I put a laser-like focus on it. I must have spent nine months, maybe mm. maybe a year, getting just the facts on this case. Just, I remember, uh, I remember Doctor um, uh, uh, Jacques Vallée, and he was a little hesitant. He was like, "Ooh, Roswell's a hot kind of a hot button issue." I, he he would sit in the back of the editor room with me. Jacques Vallée is like one of the most respected yes. intellectual heavyweights on the planet alive today in the scientific community. And he is uh, working with me on the phenomenon. He was reluctant. He was like, ooh, are you sure you want to touch Roswell? I said, yeah, I'm going to do Roswell. And he would sit in the back of the edit room and he'd say, just the facts, ma'am. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Just the facts, ma'am. 
That's so awesome. that's what this this segment is. So that's that's Jesse Marcel. Let, let's actually, let's play this part oh, if you go don't for mind. It. Oh, right please here. go so for I have, it. Absolutely. This is from the phenomenon. This is about some maybe an hour into the documentary you did. This is the one yep. from 2020. You couldn't even bend it. You couldn't bend it. Even with a sledgehammer, would bounce off it. Marcel was ordered to immediately transport the strange wreckage to Fort Worth Army Airfield. There, Marcel was met by the commanding general who told him to keep silent in the face of what was becoming a media frenzy. They had a whole flock of microphones there. They wanted me to, to they wanted some comments from me, but I wasn't at liberty to do that. There Marcel it is. Marcel was instead picture. ordered to pose with wood, foil, and rubber debris from a conventional weather balloon. The real stuff was on the airplane on the tarmac, All I just could like. do is keep a mouth shut. Wow. And General Ramey is the one who told the newspapers what it was and to forget about it. It was nothing more than a weather observation balloon. Of course, which we, we both knew differently. Both knew differently. Colonel Thomas DuBose. And he said that, that so confident. Colonel, Connors, uh, Colonel DuBose, this is a, can you play this one more oh, statement sure. by yeah, Colonel yeah. DuBose? Absolutely. Because huh. this guy was also in the photograph, Colonel DeBose. Thomas DeBose, right, who was this. also ordered to pose with the fake debris, describes how an iron curtain of secrecy slammed down. This is the highest priority you can exhibit, and you will say nothing. More than top secret, as he said. Beyond that, this is the story we're going to tell the public. This is a cover story, the balloon part of it, in order we don't have any more inquiries about what we picked up on the desert. Well, there you go. There so, your... you know, I get the chills even to this day yeah. looking at that because you're going to tell me that a weather balloon is top secret? No. Higher than top secret. Like beyond top secret. Thank you for watching the video, guys. Please hit that subscribe button and check out this clip's full podcast episode by clicking here or in the description below.